Okay, we're on. We're live now, so recording. Okay, Voodoo, uh, you know, I really like um, uh, Dr. Hawkins' work. Now, the thing with the, you see, from A Course in Miracles perspective, this whole world is an illusion, yeah? So everything but, if one is identified with the limited self, i.e. one's uh, thinking and one's body, then the experience of the world is its real, and it impacts the, the separated self. So, now, the, the world of spirit, and, you know, the world of identified bodies, like, I'm a, I'm a, you could say, if there's identification with this body and the thinking, there's the experience of a me, a separate me, sitting in this room. Now, uh, but at, at a course level, there is no me. That's, the, that's an illusion of me experiencing a separate self because there's currently um, identification. If there's identification with the thinking and the body and the, the limited aspects of self or ego, then the experience is limited. And when the experience of self is limited, then the projection of others is that others are also limited because I, I project out the world I experience. So if I'm, if I'm witnessing, if, I, if, if there is witnessing, in this room, i.e. there's no identification with the limited self, with body or thoughts, or anything happening within this environment, then uh, all that's happening in this room is that there is witnessing of, of everything in this room. So it becomes what's called a limitless, you could say lim limitless, limitless experiencing. You know, there is no experience of a separated self in this room. Okay? So, if there is identification with the body and the thinking, i.e. now one experiences, oh, I'm this body, oh, these thoughts, they're mine, then I'll project that every, you know, I'm, I'm in a room full of other bodies who probably are thinking and are, are that, you see. So uh, you don't get the experience of others. Now, the thing with, um, when we're identified with the body, then the experience is separation from the body. But it doesn't mean that, um, uh, and, Everything that I say, take what you want, leave the rest. Um, that spirits, you know, if you if you undock, you know, people have out of body experiences. You know, they're in the opera, operating theater. Suddenly, they're at the top of the room, witnessing everything that's happening, and they say, "Oh, are, you know, uh, you dropped something in this <laughs> or something," you know. So, but you know, they were up and they were witnessing. So that's the. <laughs> I didn't know where that came from. Anyway, that, that's the thing of, like, so there are many experiences, and I would agree with this, that the spirit can undock from the body. So spirits are actually, in this domain, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about the higher domains, but in this domain, one could be attached to a physical body, like, you know, I could be docked into my body right now, I'm communicating with you, or potentially I could leave the body and still be in this room, but in spirit form, yes? So, now, um, the, uh, things with voodoo and possessions. Yeah, so possessions, you know, like you'll get um, at the lower levels of consciousness, you know, at, when one gets to the lower levels of consciousness, um, the identification with the separate self becomes very, very strong. Yeah, so when, when there's extreme identification with the physical body and the thinking, it's almost like a cut to the light of consciousness because they're so heavily one is identifying and therefore one starts to get orchestrated from a lower vibration of consciousness. There's like these, these radio frequencies and when one is very much in the identified with the, with the body, the thinking, usually emotions like guilt, shame and fear uh, start to predominate because uh, uh, this huge limited contracted identification and one starts to almost be attracted to things which are fear-based, uh, separation-based, and destructive, essentially. There is an unconscious attraction to negativity, fear-based or destructive environments, and people, and energies. We could say anything in spirit, not docked into a body, could be a spirit in spirit form. So yeah, um, at the low levels, you know, like I come from an addiction background, you know, like I was binging out in food, I was working in the stock market, so you become very, very identified, full of fear, full of self-centered fear, acting out on food just to escape the darkness and the feeling of self-hatred and self-loathing inside. 
medicating on food and work and addiction. At those levels, and especially when you go into uh, drugs and alcohol, you see, you can almost like the, uh, the consciousness becomes very weak and then can be taken over. Can be, you can have demonic possession, is what's called classically demonic possession. So it's like, you know, you, take a, you go into party, take a lot of drugs and alcohol, there's very, very weak spirituality, very ego-based lifestyle, and uh, suddenly if there is a, a what I mean, demonic means a, a, a spirit a very low, extremely low vibration. So then you'll classically get like the newspaper, um, this guy will say, well, I took a lot of drugs and alcohol, and then suddenly I heard a voice saying it's God or Jesus and said, in the, name of, in the name of God, just go out and get that gun and shoot everyone dead in the name of God. And, and it's almost like it's taken over. Uh, so that would be like demonic possession. Um, negative energy, I mean, you know, like you can go to, you can train in spiritual healing. I, I did Reiki, spiritual healing. You can try and be a channel of light and you can, you know, you can put some healing energy seemingly. I mean, at a non-dual level, in the illusion, of course, none of this is happening. But uh, in a dualistic level, if I try and get out of my ego and channel some light onto someone when I'm a spiritual healer, they'd say, oh, look, I feel a bit better. You know, so, but also um, in the negative realms, you know, you do have things like black magic and voodoo and, and curses and stuff like that, where people can seemingly send negative energy your way. However, I, I like to paraphrase that. The whole thing with uh, attack, psychic attack, physical attack, all of those things, only people in physical bodies can only attack you and spirits can only attack you where you're weak. So where you've transcended, um, as you go up, you know, if you look at classical Indian, the upper chakras, or of course in miracles, or the, or the Christian thing, um, the seven deadly sins, you can only be attacked with weaknesses if you have them. So you can't be, as you tend to get more spiritually strong and do your forgiveness work, transcend, you know, uh, lust, transcend uh, greed, uh, pride, all of those uh, self-centered lower nature activities, uh, there's less and less chinks in which you can be attacked. However, if someone's not yet, you can be attacked. So hence, uh, just very, I don't want to go on, I, I mean, I could talk on this thing for like seven hours, but... Um, uh, so you have things like, you know, each time you go up, and Hawkins has done a lot of work on this uh, through muscle testing, kinesiology, e at each gateway, as you go up, as you do your spiritual work, in each gateway there are tests that stop you going on to the next level. And each gateway there are tests. Now, even, the, um, uh, at the, even at the very highest levels, even at the level of enlightenment, there are still tests. Uh, so classically that's talked about in the Bible and by Buddha so uh, even you know there is a, a non-verbal temptation to claim power over the world uh, and that non-verbal temptation needs to be declined else actually that falls there can be a fall from grace of a spiritual teacher you know suddenly uh, you know or if the if the, if the sexual chakra if there is a sexual chakra, is te you know, as you get to the higher levels, as you become a more popular spiritual teacher, I was going to talk about this in the coming weeks in the group. But as you become a thing, it's like the collective ego, in bodies and out of bodies, psychically, is looking for a chink in the armor. Anything that's not fully transcended within a spiritual teacher is constantly tested. And at any point, um, at any point, any physical teacher can fall, you know. Uh, you know, like, I, you know, I mean, you know, I think Jesus, you know, uh, start, you know following Jesus, following the Buddha. Uh, I would say Hawkins is dead now. I mean, I'd put, I'd put my soul on the line to recommend Hawkins yeah. as a teacher. Uh, I don't say that lightly. Yeah. Uh, so, um, but any teacher in a physical body, until they passed all the tests and the body's gone, you know, it is possible for a teacher to fall at any time. If a teacher falls, um, you know, often things change. You know, you're following a teacher for many years and, and, and uh, indicators come along, you know, if you do your research. 
which may may or may not, but can indicate, you know, a fallen teacher. The thing I do, like, you know, if I was following a teacher, like Hawkins talked about, I'm on camera, but I'll talk about it, and I might get lambasted. Um, Ra Ramesh Belkasar, uh, who, um, who's still living, I believe. So it's a bit, well, anyway. Anyway, he's talked about, I won't, I won't talk about him, I'll talk in general. There was a teacher that he recommended who was living, and then he, he gave the thing that, well, look on the internet, and I'd go by that. So I knew that he had fallen. I won't say what teacher it is. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, I watch his early videos, you know, because, uh, okay, when they fall, everything after they fall I wouldn't watch. But uh, if, you know, and I, I watch uh, videos, I look up on the internet from when Hawkins was alive, and I go, okay, well, that's from when he said he was good. And I watch those videos, and it's not a problem for me. But anything I feel comes after a teacher's fallen, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't personally watch. Why? Because um, the energy of the teacher, even if they use the same words, you know, uh, if you're in the presence of a high teacher, uh, and if you're in the presence of someone who's just talking words but is not at that level, mm -hmm. is totally different. And I wouldn't even bother listening to someone, you know, like it, uh, you know, if uh, someone has fallen, I, I, you know, they haven't got the energy, even if they have the same words. So, um, anyway, so, um, so possess possession, yeah. You know, so there can be such things as demonic attacks, you know, like Buddha was telling the truth beset by demons. As you get to very, very high levels, the attacks become ferocious because you're a threat to the collective truth. When you're a nobody, you know, you probably just get this, you know, you don't get the big, the big guys after you. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you're... Would you say babies are vulnerable? Well... Then because they're so blissed out. So, like, because with the country where I'm from, yeah. they say, stay, let everybody stay away from the baby. Oh. So people can have a look at the Moses basket, but some women have got a really intense stare, is what they're called. Yeah. Oh. They can disturb the spirit of the baby. So my mum didn't allow anybody around my son when he was born to come too close to to stare down, you know, right into the baby. What was the question again? Mm. Sorry, is that are babies also vulnerable? Every yeah. every, every every being is vulnerable, dependent because uh, through a, uh, kinesiologic research, babies come in the level of consciousness. They come in uh, pre-selected karma. <coughs> so. Um, and the events that we set for even babies, <coughs> where they're born, who their parents are, what things befall them, and adults, um, is, uh, I would say, mostly karmically determined. Well, you know, what's in their pre-existing karma. So, if there's vulnerabilities, then that can happen at any time. You know, the vulnerabilities can happen at any time. You know, if... Um, if, if something of an, of, that's within the negative realm is, and dualistic knows your weakness, uh, then, then uh, if they have uh, ill intent, whether they be in spirit or physical form, they know your weakness. You know, like, if they know I like donuts, you know, if they're, gonna, they're, gonna get, they're not going to give me like, you know, um, uh, not going to give me like a, a, mo a new mobile phone. They're going to give me donuts to pull me off. You see, so. You know, so if it's, if, you know, you, you're, you're, you're attacked on your weaknesses, which is the thing, you know, every time you fall for any of the temptations and the sins or the chakras or whatever, that's the thing you need to try. If you transcend that within yourself, you are no longer susceptible to that attack. Once you've, you know, uh, transcended everything. So, does that answer the question? Absolutely. Yeah.